let's move on to uh, one of the artists whose music has really meant a lot to me and this community, and it's going to be Ms. Flor Janssen singing Euphoria from uh, the Best Zongers Song Festival, singing from home, because as some of us might know, uh, she had a recent operation, and uh, I guess that was most comfortable for her to do this stuff from home, which is great. Um, yeah, let's do it. Flor Janssen, Euphoria, from the Best Zongers Song Festival. Why, why can't this moment last forevermore? Tonight, tonight eternity's an open door. Lord, don't ever stop doing the things you do. Don't go, in every breath I take I'm breathing you. There's no good stopping point ever. Uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, uh it's we gotta we gotta get a a term coined in the dictionary called the Flor Janssen effect, where it's like the second she starts singing, the second her voice comes through, whether it's in like an ensemble or something, or you just start listening to a recording, you get that like, it's that yeah, it's that prickly cactus goosebump feeling, right? Oh man, we're about two thirds through the song. And we, I have a feeling there's something that's going to happen at the end that's going to really blow it out of the water because that's what she does. Um, she's always thinking about those. She's always creating those climactic moments at the perfect dramatic spots in the song. I would love, let's let's go back. And I just want to talk about how we got to this point so we can better understand what happens from here. Tonight, tonight eternity's an open door. It's a really balanced, she starts with a really balanced, even uh, head voice dominant sound. And yet, she maintains that quality, of that pop rocky quality in her sound that she discusses in her master classes. That is uh, more of a straight tone. It's, it's utilizing compression, not in a tense way. Now, compression is not tenseness in the sound. Compression is is creating just enough twang in the sound to maintain... A, cl a crystal clarity without relying on vibrato. And, and what that does is it makes the sound go into the microphone much cleaner, makes it fit into mixes better. That's why, you know, if you're talking about any singer with amplification, we talk about utilizing compression importantly. Uh, with operatic singing, it's a little more difficult to get that true sound, uh, that true operatic sound on microphones. You need to have like a whole array and a lot of, you know, space, and you have to rely on a good acoustic. She does that excellently, of course, but in this case, just for context, she's relying on that really clean sound. That really clean, no, no frills, nothing. Start us off in the most pure sound possible. Because this song has a lot to offer compositionally, 
but also as an artist she she paints her voice on it incredibly incredibly well incredibly effectively i should say it's going to be good regardless no don't ever stop doing the things you do don't go those eyes dude oh my gosh in every breath i take i'm breathing you Letting it stay breathy. But because she's in this higher register, it's going to require more air. So what you hear is this increase of energy, but the tone quality is not surpassing. So it's almost like it's almost like she's like teasing you. While she's amping up the energy, you can hear the energy increasing in her sound and in the song. You can also you're not truly at that point yet because she doesn't give you that tone quality that reflects that increase of energy. That's what I was trying to say, which is great. The, the increase of pitch, it increases the energy you perceive as well. But as an artist, she's keeping it back, right? I love the fan, man. That's when she adds that even more crystal clear clarity. So when I say clarity, I mean that that compressed, that forward sound. Up until now, it's been a very evenly placed, very relaxed, you know, mixed sound. But then we get into that true belt sound, that belt quality on those rhythmic onsets that she has. The uh, 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 uh. And the quality of the sound doesn't change from the onsets to that phrase at the end which means that she's really giving us that true balanced diaphragmatic onset feeling which she talks about that's the when she was reacting to her own ghost love score she talks about how she had to practice those really high onset moments uh, a lot which is uh the word those operatic sounds the you, you know what i'm talking about if you're here um she had, those were the things she had to practice the most it's true because it requires the most active coordination with the breath that if you don't practice it and you don't know exactly what you're doing you don't have a plan for it you're going to get tense in the throat which you can't rely on or else it's going to tire you out now she's she's a master at vocal stamina she's a master at those really difficult refined uh versatile moments those moments of versatility when you need to switch on a dime aka going from like belting to operatic singing going from different belting moments you know doing multiple onsets in a row because that requires onset release onset release onset release onset release in the most the quickest the fastest amount of time right so being able to whip that out in no time with as much depth of timbre as she does again super impressive because you have to create that diaphragmatic onset release without interfering anything with the space at all anything with the vowel anything she has it all planned out ahead of time it's like if you think about her performing as like amazing she just does it on the spot i don't think that's the most impressive thing the most impressive thing about her performing is that it's all so highly integrated so impressively thought out beforehand so well prepared that it becomes something she doesn't have to think about and you see that in all of her live performances it's so stunningly perfect and you can see in her eyes the intentionality and the specificity when we talk about acting and singing now this is going into my operatic training perspective when you talk about acting while singing, you're unable to thoroughly act unless your voice is something that you don't have to think about at all. And the biggest tell, the biggest window into yourself as an actor, as a dramatic uh, purveyor of emotion, are the eyes. You can tell in someone's eyes if they're not comfortable with their voice when they're performing. Because if those eyes aren't completely intentional in what's happening, then you're not going to get truth. And every time Floor sings, every time she gives us those really dramatic, that glaring eye, it's the essence of dramatic truth. She can only do that because she has that whole vocal complex, that whole vocal technique, that whole vocal plan for every song. Every vocal plan for every song is different. She has that vocal plan ironed out flat. She has that system down for herself. And that's what makes her so great. 
I can't, dude. We are free where everything's allowed and love comes first. Forever and ever together, we're sailing to infinity. Ooh, we're higher and higher and higher, we're reaching for divinity. And I, I love those moments where she could sing with full distortion as much as she wanted, right? And we we in the vocal community talk about distortion as a, you know, I'm a classical singer, so distortion is not my expertise, but we talk about it as like a skill that the the more gritty, the better your distortion, the you know, the more skilled you are at that. But it's not that. It's about the versatility. If you can just dip into some true distortion that doesn't interfere with the rest of your voice and just do that for a second as a little accent, as a little, uh, as a little pressure, as a little... Uh, uh, yeah, accent's the best word, I guess. Accent on the text you're singing, right? To give more deeper meaning to the text is what other what is singing otherwise. It's it's really about it's really about coloring the sound and telling a story, which is what she does really well when she gives like ten different colors in one line, like this. She digs into those lower notes and she keeps that lower tamer as she goes up, digs into that word with the divinity with a little bit of distortion. You don't think about it, but it sounds so easy to her. It sounds low in her voice, but these are such high notes. Let me see. Ugh. All right. So this is like a C sharp five, where if any of you guys have sung on the voice clinic with me here on Twitch, this is some hard notes for a lot of people, especially when it comes to mixing the sound to be that deep and that low. When you hear her singing and you're not thinking about pitches, you're not thinking about technique or any of that, it, it just sounds like it's her middle voice. But by maintaining that, uh, the passaggio for a voice like Floors sits somewhere around, you know, between... Uh, I don't know, Lanito, any of you sopranos in chat, tell me if I'm wrong. But I think it's somewhere around, you know, like a G4, you know, through like B flat, B4. And C sharp 4, right? That that she, That's literally the range she's singing in. So being able to maintain that depth of sound in that range is so impeccably hard to do. You have to be so refined and so, you have to plan it out so impeccably to get through that. Yeah, I mean, Lenito, you're a soprano. A4 through D5, which is exactly the range she's singing in right now. That's like, those are the worst notes. That's that passage. That's that that vocal break spot. That if you're not on your breath, if you're not on your on your full sound, not releasing the voice and not relying on on release of the jaw and the perfect positioning, that those notes are going to kill you. That's literally the notes that she is making sound the most impressive. She's proof of her own technique that she talks about. And I, when the first time we watched her vocal master classes here on stream, I was so, like, giddy. Because everything she was talking about is old school Italian style technique. It's relying on the breath to create the sound. Relaxing and optimizing the, the way that you articulate. And if you watch her mouth move while she sings, check it out. Watch her mouth move while she sings. It's just a smooth, linear movement. It just flows. It's just even. It's vibrant. It's it's relaxed. It's so relaxed. There is no tension, nothing difficult about what she's doing. I, nothing. She's not making it difficult, I should say. Everything she's doing is very difficult. You have to work very hard and be very smart to get to this point. But she doesn't. That that's the key. It's what you work towards. And when you work towards eliminating difficulty in your singing, that's when you make true progress. If anything is too hard, you just got to you got to simplify it.
And she's the essence, the perfection of simplicity in singing in the most virtuosic way. Keeping those teeth showing. The higher you go, the more twang, the more teeth. I mean, oh my gosh. That trajectory of dramatic energy she brings at the end. Let's chat. Let's like. So I kind of stopped talking at the point I started jumping back before. And um, the intensity that she needs to bring to create this like poppy energetic idea happen in a way that really hits you hard that intensity that you bring both emotionally and vocally is just like so overwhelming dude she makes my body tense when watching and listening to her saying yeah that's that's like true artistry right there that's that's the essence of so good here The, the level of poise required to keep that vocal instrument relaxed while channeling that laser hot intensity into everything that she's transmitting, right? We talked about earlier some singers who were overacting a little bit, and you can kind of tell, and it works. It really does work. Overacting works. But just like this, the voice has a sweet spot, you can't over-sing or under-sing, really. There's always a sweet spot. She channels that sweet spot perfectly, we talked about earlier. Dramatically, there's also a sweet spot between taking real emotion and amplifying it into that place where it's not cheesy and overdone, but it's also not underdone. It's in that sweet spot where you take these normal human feelings... You know, euphoria. Euphoria, even though it's an intense one, is is a real feeling. It's a feeling we all experience in times of our lives that generate great amounts of of serotonin and great amounts of um, you know, that other hormone chemical, whatever it is. But it's a real human feeling. It's a real thing we can identify with. And somehow she slips herself dramatically into that place that is honest and reflective of that real euphoria that we feel as humans in those really impeccable moments of our life those exciting happy joyous moments that give us a rush of emotion and she amplifies it into a way that just fits a, a performance a dramatic performance of this kind it's a sweet spot you can't overdo it there you can't underdo it if you want to get to that place of emotional resonance that somehow she's just always in Absolutely beautiful. Exactly. Absolutely, Paula. The sweet spot for Flora comes naturally. 100%. Cannot disagree with that. The sweet spot comes naturally. 
that's the result of years and years of perfecting your craft, right? Singing is a trade. It's not, uh, it's, it's, sorry, I should say it this way. Singing is a trade as much as it is an art. Wow. Where is she? Can we, do we see her like reaction or response? No, no, we don't. Like, because usually on this show, you get to see the singers, you know, being, uh, responding to how the other singers thought of their, their singing, which is great. But anyway, um, the pursuit of singing is, is getting your voice into a technical place where you can work with it, right? You can, you can master your voice's technical. You can sing all the notes in your natural range at whatever uh, volume you want, at whatever sound you want, right? That's the technical mastery. The dramatic mastery is really just starting with the inception of a poetic idea that corresponds with your song and letting that enter your technique and come out both emotionally and sonically as that emotion. And then you refine that into a way that you can perform and create all of those nuances that come with a performance, the dramatics, the musicality, the sound, uh, everything in, in a really virtuosic way. And then that becomes the challenge. Now, perfecting that challenge is the lifelong pursuit. Flor Janssen is an amazing example of it. Anyway, it's been too long since we listened to her, but I'm really glad we did today. Um, really, really beautiful. Il mare eterno nella mia, na- mia anima. What's that from? Yeah. All right. I do have my tickets, Master of Disaster. Actually, that's a great way. That's a great segue right now. Let's finish this out. Beautiful. So, uh, great time to segue into this, actually. Uh, I do have my Nightwish virtual tickets, uh, virtual concert tickets. If you do not... We are doing a giveaway to help fund someone's two-night ticket of the Nightwish Virtual Concert. Now, we cannot officially give away any of the uh, Nightwish tickets officially. We can't buy them and give them away. That's not allowed. However, uh, we have a giveaway going on right now on the Discord server, discord.gg slash bigbrainsinger. If you are still in need of a two-night ticket for that concert, uh, just go to the giveaway server, uh, sorry, go to the roles server, give yourself the giveaway role, and you'll be automatically entered into the drawing of a gift card meant to sponsor your purchase of a two-day Nightwish ticket. So um, please go ahead and join the Discord if you're interested in that. Um, Capriani is... Uh, really, really graciously sponsoring that giveaway. Um, yeah, so if you don't have your tickets yet, we we want to help you get them so you can experience the music with everyone else. Um, yeah, 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 guys. Um, ooh, two wheels that need to be done. 